1.1 gigabits per second over Wi-Fi. Now that's impressive. These are two standard UK internet service provider routers. On my left is the Vodafone THG 3000 and on my right, the BT Smart Hub. Both are highly prevalent in UK households and therefore, unsurprisingly, many end up on secondhand marketplaces like eBay where they can be had for surprisingly small amounts of money, such as five pounds, that's roughly $6 converted, or even less. What is surprising though, is just how capable these devices are from a wireless performance point of view. Both can deliver over one gigabit per second over the wireless air interface, which is really quite impressive for a five pound device. In today's video, I will demonstrate this performance and tell you a bit about how these devices manage to achieve such stellar numbers. The peak performance test setup is as follows. On the left is the router being benchmarked, in this case, the BT Smart Hub. It has three ethernet cables connected the black is for WAN connectivity, and then the yellow and white connect up to the file delivery servers, which are laptops running files in a server, transmitting a file off their SSDs to the clients. The clients are my i7 PC, which has an ASUS PCE AC88 Wi-Fi card, which is 4x4 and 1024 QAM capable. It has Four external antennas connected up there and then the second device is my OnePlus 7 Pro 5G phone. The phone is using a standard browser-based FTP client to download meanwhile the i7 PC is using the FileZilla client to download the files off the respective servers. Both the BT Smart Hub and the Vodafone router are simultaneously dual band, which means that they broadcast 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi at the same time. The challenge is that they both broadcast both these bands at such a high specification that the only device I have which can take full advantage of either band's capabilities of either router is the ASUS PCE Wi-Fi card and Sadly, I only have one of these and also it is only capable of one band at a time. Therefore, in order to work out the maximum simultaneous performance from both the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz from each router using an optimal device, I'm going to have to do a bit of clever testing here. So for each router in this peak performance test scenario, there will be two rounds. On the first round, the five gigahertz will be tested using the ASUS PCE AC88, while the 2.4 gigahertz will be being saturated by my phone. Then on the second round, the ASUS Wi-Fi card will be downloading off 2.4 gigahertz while my phone saturates the five gigahertz. Then to work out the peak simultaneous performance across both bands, I will add up the ASUS numbers, the performance from the five gigahertz and the performance from the 2.4 gigahertz. Everything is now set up to test the BT Smart Hub. So I have my OnePlus 7 Pro 5G here and you can see on the Wi-Fi we are on 2.4 gigahertz. So I will start the download, which we can see is now proceeding there. And then I will go into my download and we can see it's going at about 14 megabytes per second, which is fairly reasonable, but we are not too worried about that as it's just for saturation purposes. What we're more interested in is the performance that we can get from our ASUS Wi-Fi card. We can see we're at a nice 2.1 gigabit per second link rate, which is pretty much what we would expect given the 
4x4 and 1024 gram. So I'll just start these downloads off now in files in it. And we can see the rate it's reporting there for these. So something like 30 to 40 megabytes per second and about 40 to 70. And we can see our speed here, which does vary a bit from about 1.1 gigabit per second and about 200 megabits per second. But still 1.1 gigabits per second is really quite really quite impressive. I have now flipped the devices round so my phone is on 5 gigahertz and we will start the download which is running at about 50 megabytes per second. So then we can go up onto our ASUS card and start the downloads once again. Did I get my mouse right? So we've got a link rate of 195 megabits per second, which, or actually 288.5 megabits per second now, which is because this is 20 megahertz bandwidth. But the speeds we're getting are still pretty reasonable between about 40 megabits per second and 207, 209, it looked like that. So still pretty, pretty reasonable numbers, but I'll continue watching this to get the peaks. The five gigahertz performance came in at 1.1 gigabits per second with the 2.4 gigahertz at 217 megabits per second. But to keep the number of decimal places consistent when talking in gigabits, I converted the 2.4 gigahertz to 0.2 gigabits per second so that we then end up with a whopping total of 1.3 gigabits per second as our aggregate wireless throughput for this BC Smart Hub. An absolutely stellar number, especially considering the price point of it. Now it's time to test out the Vodafone Hub. Same setup as before, so I'll go through things a little bit quicker. With the ASUS on five gigahertz, our link rate is changing a little bit between 1.9 gigabits per second and 2.1 gigabits per second, with an actual throughput of between about 1.1 gigabit per second and then around about 200 megabits per second as we were seeing before with the BT hub. With the ASUS on 2.4 gigahertz, we are seeing link rates above 200 megabits per second once more and actual throughput between about 215 megabits per second and about 40 megabits per second. So in other words, it's very much like the BT Smart Hub again. All added up, the Vodafone Hub also reached the astounding heights of 1.3 gigabits per second. While these tests are designed to assess the maximum wireless performance of the routers, it wouldn't hurt while we're here to stick a substantial ancient wall between the router on test and our clients to see how they perform in a more realistic home environment. In this case, I have placed the BT Smart Hub in one of the spare bedrooms, which has a very thick ancient wall between it and my room where the test equipment is. It's five gigahertz performance peaked at around 620 to 711 megabits per second with the 2.4 gigahertz reaching a climax of around 150 megabits per second. This leads us to an aggregate peak of approximately 860 megabits per second for the BT Smart Hub in this situation. The wireless performance from the Vodafone router was substantially similar to the BT Smart Hub. Up next, I will show you inside these routers, which will explain why they are both so fast and so similar. This shows the inside of the BT Smart Hub. 
What we are most interested in are the wireless system on chips, also known as SOCs. In this regard, the BT Smart Hub has a Broadcom BCM4366 series 45 gigahertz, which is an absolutely flagship part featuring 4x4 MIMO and 1024 QAM support. In fact, this is the same SOC as the ASUS wireless card that I am using to test out these routers. And it can also be found in ASUS and other top of the line wireless products. On the 2.4 gigahertz front is another high end part, the BCM43602, which has 3x3 MIMO and 256 QAM support. You can also see the three 2.4 gigahertz and four 5 gigahertz antennas on the PCB as well. The Vodafone router is pretty much identical, again featuring a Broadcom BCM4366 series for 5 gigahertz and a 43602 for 2.4 gigahertz. The main notable difference is that the antennas look completely different on this Vodafone router and in fact actually look a little bit menacing or creative in some ways. The main difference between these two routers when it comes to utility as a wireless access point is the channel limitations. The BT Smart Hub only allows operation on channels 36 to 48, whereas the Vodafone router has the ability to go on DFS channels, which tend to be significantly less congested, but do come with some potential downsides in relation to radar scanning and device support. Thanks for watching this video about the super high specs internet service provider routers. I hope you've enjoyed finding out about their capabilities as much as I did through the testing and opening these things up. I will probably do a video about setting these up as access points because that's probably the best way to reuse them if you've got any lying around. But until then, I hope you all stay safe and see you then.